Hey guys, SFP here, and welcome to a long-awaited video. I know it's been about four months, but I'm back. And I guess, as for my absence, you know, life kind of gets in the way. You know, there's there's things that unfortunately, you know, kept me from making more videos, uh, such as work and school. But now I'm back, and hopefully uh, I won't have another leave of absence like as long as the one I just had. Anyways, uh, we're starting here with the second season here, and as if you guys remember, I actually won the MLS Cup in my first season, so here's hoping I can actually uh, keep the trophy here at home. And now I'm just looking at my team here, seeing uh, which potential players I'll be able to sell off, and hopefully I'll also be able to bring in some new fresh talent here. Now, as most of you guys know, FIFA 16 is coming up in about a month and a half. And so I was actually pondering whether or not to continue this uh, career move, considering that FIFA 16 is just around the corner. Now, ultimately, what I decided on doing is just playing out uh, the rest of this career mode as long as um, I have to wait, basically, until FIFA 16 comes out. So you guys will be getting uh, videos for this uh, DC United career mode season for the next about f uh, five to six weeks. And speaking about that, for FIFA 16 itself, I'm still wondering what team to choose. Now, I would obviously like to continue DC United for FIFA 16, but I figure since the game's coming out, I, you know, I try something new. So hopefully, you guys will enjoy that. I'll actually post up another video at some point this weekend, uh, kind of giving you guys an idea of what I'm going to do for the next game. Now, here we have a transfer offer for Bill Hamid. Now, Bill Hamid is a key player for us. And I actually don't intend on selling him, no matter how much they actually offer me. I plan on keeping Bohemian for as long as possible. And as you guys know, I have that uh, three-player rule where basically three players are chosen from the team. And those players will stay with the team until they retire. Uh, barring any, I guess, unsatisfaction on their part, whether they want to leave. You know, that's something that I can't control. Now, here we have an offer from for Connor Dole from LA Galaxy. Now, 800000 is a very good deal. However, I'm going to milk this for as much as I can. So I kind of offered here. And let's see what they what they want back. So here I got $900 million for David Estrada, who honestly was a third or fourth uh, striker on the offset. So that's not going to be too much of a worry for me. Now here, the Galaxy come back with a little bit of a higher offer, but I still want more, so let's see if they, they'll accept a million and a half, although, to be honest, Connor Dole is not worth a million and a half, but we'll see if the other Galaxy are stupid enough to actually go for that offer. Anyways, here, I believe I'm going to extend Bill Hamid's uh, contract. I'm going to extend it because I believe he asked for it, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, and I see we have another player sold, and let's see here. Yeah, David Strad, I thought that already happened. Anyways, I guess they just matched it. Now, here is where I, you know, I was doubting whether or not I wanted to do it. I think I stalled at the beginning, um, but then I, I went right back as I figured, you know what? That's a pretty high enough offer already. I'll just take it. So I'll settle for a million and end. Uh, 1.1 million, I guess, which is a good deal considering he's basically worth less than half that amount. So, uh, here's hoping that that gets settled really quickly. And Hamid has accepted, which is good because I plan on keeping him for a long time. Now, here it seems that Kyle Porter is actually going to Rangers, and I'm not even gonna bother. Oh, uh, with that uh, counter offer, I'll just, I just honestly want him out of my team. I wasn't very fond of Cal Porter when he was with the DC United, so honestly, I just, <laughs> I just wanted that spot open. So here it seems that we have 29 players in our roster, and I just switched Bill Hamid, so I won't be getting any more offers from him, hopefully, which would kind of be annoying at some point because I know everyone wants a piece of him and even in real life actually there have been rumors of him possibly going abroad but after signing that extension with DC United um, he should be staying here for a long while if not the transfer offer would have to be enormous for him to actually leave 
Anyways, here we see that Cal Porter got sold, and so did Connor Dole. So we'll have that nice influx of budget uh, to see what else, um, to see what other players will be able to bring. Now, if uh, to remind you guys, because it's been a while, I have this rule of three, where basically, uh, like I like I mentioned before, three players that are chosen from the team are going to say they'll retire, and also I'm limiting myself to three transfers per transfer window. And that, I believe, also includes free transfers. So some of you guys might be saying, that's, that's stupid, you know, it's, it's, um, it's really contrary to what the game is supposed to be, you know, but I'm, you know, after watching a lot of videos from other people doing less plays, or not less plays, but I guess FIFA career modes, um, you know, one of the things that kind of gets to me is that the temptation of wanting to just basically redo your whole entire team in the first season. You know, I kind of wanted to get rid of that, and I've seen a lot of YouTubers, you know, fall into that hole, so to speak, where they just get enticed with all these, like, good deals and just basically completely shift their team. Because in my eyes, if you do that, then there's no point in choosing an initial team. You can just start off with whichever team you want and just go with it if you're going to just, you know, completely make an overhaul. So there's no point in choosing... Uh, a certain team off the bat so what I want to do is I want to limit myself to three transfers and I think I just used them all right now for this transfer window I'm hoping to get the Bolivian Ramajao Rama excuse me the Peruvian Santillan which is my homie there because I'm from Peru or I guess I should say my parents are from Peru I was born here and my data which I believe is a Paraguayan right back and so I figure this rule would also make it well uh, would also make things more interesting because that way you know, I'm challenged and I have to be a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, knowledgeable or picky on the transfers that I'm trying to make. Now, I went for a striker because I need another striker because I just sold two of mine. Uh, as for a right back, I could use some more depth in right back and left back as well. So that's why I went with those three uh, positions. Because Sailor Kemp needs some competition. I don't think I have another left back besides Sailor Kemp. Now, I have Corb playing on the left flank as well. But Corb is a right center, uh, not center back, right back, excuse me. And so I'm hoping that with the integration of these two new fullbacks, I'll have a lot more flexibility in deciding uh, my starting 11 for whichever game I have. Now here we see some acquisitions here. Nothing too exciting, I guess. Chivas USA obviously aren't spending anything, which is uh, to be expected. Sorry, any Chivas USA fans, although are there any still Chivas USA fans. I'm just wondering here. If you guys watching my videos, if you guys are a Chivas USA fan, just leave a comment in the comments section and we'll see how many of you guys are there left. I mean, you know, it's pretty sad. I feel fat. I feel bad for the fan base over there, you know, because they wanted the team to be successful. And unfortunately, the front office wasn't able to make that happen. But here's hoping LAFC will fill up that hole that Chivas USA has left. Now here, the transfer season is over. I made my three transfers for this transfer season. Now I'm going to do the monthly squad report and see how many people, how many uh, attributes, I guess, my players have grown. Uh, Bill Hamid hasn't grown a single point yet, which is annoying. And then, of course, the players 29 and above are starting to lose a certain attributes uh, more I guess, importantly, their physical attributes. Look at Chris Rolf there. And some players I haven't even played, and they already went up. So that's pretty cool. There are my new two transfers. Velarde there, the Peruvian, another Peruvian there. And some Colin Martin growing there, and Mark, Mar uh, excuse me, Michael Seaton. Uh, two of uh, DC United's academy alumni, although. Uh, for those of you guys that follow MLS, and specifically DC United, you guys will know that uh, Michael Seaton was just recently transferred uh, to the Portland Timbers. And here we go with Dykstra wanting to play, so you know what? Why not? I'll let him, I'll let him take this one. It's just a friendly, so it doesn't really matter. And we're going against Viking FK, which I'm assuming is a Norwegian club, but you guys correct me over there if I'm wrong. And here I'm starting with, uh, let's see here, Spindola here. But I think Michael Seaton wanted to, to have a shot. Oh, no, it was Aguilar. Excuse me. Aguilar wanted a starting 11 spot. So here we go with the friendly here. 
And speaking about friendlies, for those of you guys that have actually seen the updates for FIFA 16, uh, now apparently there are friendly, uh, excuse me, competitions, preseason competitions, that, to my, or my opinion, I guess I should say, makes things a lot more exciting. Now, for those of you guys watching my videos, you know that I actually don't skip the friendlies. It's just, it's just something about simulating games that I don't know what it is exactly, but I just can't seem to do it. I just would rather play, even if you know, I end up not caring about the game itself. I still want to play the game. But anyways, now that there's preseason of tournaments, it should make things a lot more exciting. And here we go with our first counter attack, and I believe Michael Farfan goes shoots, but the goalkeeper from the Norwegian club, and I'm hoping it's a Norwegian club, otherwise I'm going to be wrong twice, saves it. Now here we go with a nice counter attack from the opposing team and now I'm setting up my own attack here with Arno doing a nice uh, pass to Aguilar but Aguilar seems to not be able to control the ball and he creates a turnover and here we go with an injury which is unfortunate for the opposing team because obviously you know starting off the season you don't want an injury although Depending, I guess, on the time, since it's February, I'm assuming there are they are not in preseason. They're actually probably midway through their season, if if not uh, getting closer to the end. And here you go with a nice pass to Arieta. Arieta headers it, but what a weak header by Arieta. He needs to do a lot better than that. That was just pathetic, to be honest. But here we go with the counterattack. And oh, what a nice save by Dijkstra, but... Oh, and we concede. At least that's what I thought until the linesman actually put the flag up. That was a little too close for comfort. I honestly thought that that was a goal, but judging now by the replay, he was maybe a hair off sides. Now here you go with the youngster, Robinson. Kitchen with a nice lob pass to Arieta. Arieta won't get it. And here we go with Aguilar, who shoots... And it's just missed far wide. Aguilar, the Mexican-American player, who had a great beginning of the season, but somehow his momentum has that off a bit. Now, I know he's uh, on loan, if I'm not mistaken, to the Richmond Kickers, so he's getting some playing time in the second division. But hopefully that experience he gets over there will benefit him for the... Um, in the long run for this season with DC United. Now here I'm going to make a couple changes if I'm mistaken. I'm going to put in Jeffrey for Kitchen. And I'm going to put in Martin for Arnaud. Who honestly Arnaud is, is in the latter portion of his career. He uh, is awfully slow now. But he's still a beast when it comes to those long range shots. And here you go with an, a mistake here by the defense. But... It's something that they actually managed to pull off. So, unfortunately, a promising attack gets cut extremely short. Speaking about short here, nice. Martin shoots and just is far wide again. Uh, it's actually reminding me of the beginning of last season where apparently the ball just not does not just want to go in the net. For some reason, my shots are going wide. Anyways, here we go with the counterattack for the VIK team. And he shoots in a nice save by Dijkstra. Dijkstra, although my weakest of my three goalkeepers, he seems to be the one who gets most of the amazing saves. And here we go with another counterattack. My defense actually is pretty horrible at this moment. They're getting inside way too easily, so that has to change, which is what preseason games are for. You know, you kind of... Scout your team a little, see what the uh, negatives and what the positives are, and you fix the negatives and you make the positives stronger. So, um, that's the whole point of these these types of games. Anyways, here we go, Michael Seaton, who passes it nicely to Aguilar, and Aguilar just can't seem to just can't seem to control the ball over there. So, the goalkeeper actually gets it, and I believe this will be the end of the first preseason match here. Zero zero tie, which I guess 
isn't bad, but it isn't exactly good either. You know, you want to see some progress, and so far I feel like we're stagnant. Anyways, it seems that we have something in the player conversation. It seems that Arturo Mina, our center back, is unhappy with the amount of playing time he's getting. And if I'm not mistaken, I put him as an important or a crucial a role, which would be, which was what I wanted him at the beginning. But right now, Burnbaum has actually been pretty good for us. So I don't know if I want to actually remove Burnbaum from the starting eleven, but I'll switch in Mina here for this friendly against Anderlecht, who was the old team of one Sasha Kluschen, who is now in. Uh, New York Red Bulls, and he's actually been pretty good so far. I mean, he hasn't been the standout star that I think people would associate, I guess, with him going to other Red Bulls. You know, I figured he'd be more of a star, but so far he's been more of a role player, I should say. I feel like with Jesse Marsh there, it's more of the mentality of the, the team is the star as opposed to when Henri and when uh, Tim Cahill uh, were in the team now. <laughs> Ironically, it's it's what uh, RSL was known for, you know, the whole uh, the mantra of the team is a star. But now RSL is actually playing pretty poorly under Jeff Kassar, and it's not looking good for him. I'll I'll put it that way. And if this continues, I wouldn't be surprised if they part ways at some point. I don't think he'll last. Like if if nothing positive comes out of this season for RSL, at least in the remaining. A part of the season, I don't think Jeff Kassar comes back. But then you have the whole question of, well, if Kassar is out, then who's going in? And I honestly have no idea at the moment. Anyways, here we go with Underlecht. And I believe there was a foul of some kind, actually. And my goalkeeper... Well, not my goalkeeper, actually. Underlecht's goalkeeper is trying to set up his wall there. And Luis Silva, who is another player who, ironically, is not on the team anymore. We, he got traded to RSL for Alvo, Alvaro Saborio, who I think at the moment DC is getting the better end of that deal. And here we go with Perry Kitchen who tries to curl it in the far post and unfortunately it wasn't curved enough to actually go in. Anyways, we still have such a good player but he's just too injury prone and that kind of delays his progress. He's a 26, 27-year-old now, so he should be fully formed. And what a nice shot by Eddie Johnson there. That would have been an awesome goal had he gone in. Anyways, and here's the counterattack for Anderlecht. Anderlecht with Tielemans. Or Tielemans, I can't pronounce his name, unfortunately. And I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for that on the, on the comment section. And by all means, go ahead, guys. <laughs> just, just you know, add on the comments over there. And it was a nice save by Bill Hamid there. He's getting the big bucks, so he makes some big saves. And here we go with the corner, and hopefully it's not something too dangerous. And it seems that we managed to get that out of our danger zone and here's a nice center ball by Johnson and Spindola who honestly should have done better with that opportunity doesn't get it in frame and here we go with another corner kick and that is the end of the first half guys 0-0 zero, zero. and it's not looking good I would like to say our defense is pretty good but considering they've only Angelix only had two shots on goal I don't think I should praise the defense that much, to be honest. And here you go with making a few changes here. I think I put in Velarde for Silva. And I'm probably going to take one of my strikers out. And put Arieta in for Spindle, I believe. Oh no, it's Ramajo. The Bolivian international. <laughs> Who I've actually never seen play for Bolivia. But then again, I never follow Bolivia, so I, I wouldn't know. And what a nice save there by Hamid. Terrible defense, but Hamid saves the day, which is kind of like real life, actually. And here we get a foul on one of our strikers here. And since Silva isn't here to take the free kick, it seems that Nicky D will do the honors. And he shoots from distance, and unfortunately, it's not on frame, Nicky. 
you have to actually practice that for next time. Anyways, and here we go with the end of the second friendly. And again, it's a 0-0 zero, zero draw, which is not good. My strikers seem to be inept. They do not seem to be able to score for some reason. And hopefully in this last game here, we'll be able to make that happen. That way they will go into preseason with some sort of confidence. Because right now I'm assuming because of all the misses that my strikers have had, their confidence is waning a little bit. Now here we go. I think I'm going to make a couple changes here. I'm going to put Gajes in for Hamid. And like I said, burn bombs there. And Madeira is coming in. And I'm putting Santillan on the other wing. So I'm putting in my two new fullbacks here for this last preseason friendly. It's Pongon Ses and it's... Oh crap, that's going to be horrible. I do not know how to pronounce that, guys. I apologize for any of the fans of that team because I just butchered it to the extreme there. Anyways... Here starts the last game of the preseason here. And here you go with Silva, Mexican-American. Spindola who shoots and the goalkeeper parries it to the side there. Now we have a corner kick here and I'm going to have a Spindola take it outwards. And Pontius with the header but again wide. Which is the story of this whole preseason at the moment. No, nothing is going on frame. Which is very, very frustrating, and I'm pretty sure it makes for horrible YouTube viewing right now. Now a Spindola with the corner kick, and here we go with Arieta, and Arieta shoots, and again, not on target, Arieta, not on target. It's no surprise that you're not starting. Here we go, Silva to Arieta, because this be it. Arieta shoots and wide for the billionth time. <laughs> wide. That was a nice kick, though. If only he was on frame. Or, I, you know, I could have gone with a BK there, if ref. Could have given me a PK at least. Anyways, the goalkeeper's taking a sweet time. And here we go with another corner kick to Pontius. Who gets it blocked? Nikki D. Will he shoot from that far? And what a goal, guys! Oh my god, Nikki De Leon with an awesome goal. A stunner of a long distance shot. Oh, and I'm sorry right now. I'm trying to find the words to describe this goal right now, but for some reason, I'm just speechless, guys. That was a nice curve and a. And the goalkeeper literally did nothing. And I don't I don't think that was an impossible shot to save, to be honest. I think the goalkeeper could have easily saved it. But for some reason decided to just bask in the awesomeness that is Nick DeLeon. What a goal by Nicky D, guys. Anyways, now that, that goal, now that my uh, scoring jot is finally over, we're winning the first half here, 1-0. I'm going to make a few subs here. So I'm going to put Ramajo in for uh, Johnson, and I'm going to take Silva out and put Velarde. And I think I'm also going to take Kitchen and put Halsty. Or am I not? I guess I'm not. Am I? Am I? No, I guess I'm not. Am I? Am I? Yes, finally. God, I'm so indecisive right now. That literally took like a good minute and a half to figure out whether or not I wanted Halstein in for Kitchen. Anyways, what a nice save by Hamid there. And it seems that this team is unhappy. They're trying to go for that equalizer, but I'm not going to let them, guys. I worked too damn hard to get that one goal. And here a nice Ramajo scores. What a goal. 2-0. Armajo bodies his defender to take that ball in control. And what a nice definition there. Right in the corner. The bottom corner there. 
And I believe it's the first goal for the Bolivian. Maybe I should start Ramajo instead of Eddie Johnson and a Spindola. Who knows, guys? Because right now, none of those two guys are actually getting anything on frame. And Ramajo, I think in his first, first or second try, he actually got the goal. And here you go with a nice pass to Spindola. Spindola shoots, going for the curler. And unfortunately, it just goes wide. 2-0 lead here, which is pretty... Pretty good considering our last two games have been horrible. And in the last few seconds of the game, the opposing team is trying to get a shot in. And luckily, Gajese with a nice close save right in the final minutes of the game. Here you go with, I believe it's the last corner kick, and Gajese takes it under control. No, eat, no sweat. And he just boots it. And I believe that's when the whistle should blow. For this game to be over. And that's it guys. Luckily I end the preseason. Month with a win. And. Until next time guys. See you guys later.